What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video here. Oh, I've got such a big day ahead of me. We've got a lot of chores to do, so stick around. Welcome to Beaches Scaly Beasts, where I focus on the natural keeping of herptofauna and marine aquaria. I've definitely got my work cut out for me today. It's going to be, I think I said 32, 33 degrees here in uh, in Sydney, about that. So it's going to be an absolute scorcher. I've got a heap of work to be doing in the garage as well. I've got some enclosures that I need to kind of finish off the backgrounds for. Um, I've got to make up a whole bunch of new substrates for some of my desert species. I just want to change things up. Uh, I've got a clean Loki as I always have to and I've got to spruce some stuff up all around the place to be honest because uh, I might have a friend turning up next Monday to film a video um, and if that's the case I want everything to be looking pretty good and to be honest it's this time of year where I generally kind of go over everything and give everything a good once over and, and freshen everything up for the summer months. So yeah, got my coffee thanks to the boys at the drawing board. And uh, now we're off to ANL Landscapes in Terry Hills to go pick up some crushed pink granite for some of these desert enclosures. I love this stuff. It comes up great with a bit of red desert sand in reptile enclosures. It just adds a bit of texture. So just got home. As you can see, everything's a major mess. Got enclosures in the works everywhere. I need to try to finish these four bad guys off this week. And breeding fruit flies as well for some of my smaller frogs. So I need to make some new cultures of those up because they're getting pretty rancid. Need to uh, clean up some enclosures including Mr. Loki's swamp over here. He's a bit of a mess. And I want to redo the substrate and the dragon enclosures. And I want to really redo this little Gillens monitor enclosure. Alright guys, you will see this one on a new video. I have been putting out a video of some of the bioactive tanks I've been building. I'm going to just spot clean these guys as well. They're a little bit grubby. And for now, we've got that crushed pink granite just drying outside on the top. So hopefully in a little while that'll be ready to go into some of these boxes. There's a little blotch of enjoying breakfast as well. A few cat pickies. The blotchies are enjoying the sunlight. Got another enclosure. That's just pretty much, I'm just, I painted that one with the last coat of pond seal of last night. So it's just waiting for a hit of color. Turtles are all in there at the moment. This stuff's drying out still. Loki's just had a big water change. So he's, he's full. I probably got to drain a little bit out. I forgot I had the hose on. Sorry mate, plenty of water for you to get into. And I've just finished up a couple of backgrounds using the the foam this is a canal um, insulation foam or knoff or whatever you want to say it is i need to give it another quick vacuum out but uh cam from cam's custom backgrounds put me onto this he's an absolute legend go and check out his facebook page i've got sheets of it everywhere at the moment because i think that's what i'm going to be doing it instead of expanding foam this one's a pretty simple one it's honestly going to be for my Moritz leaftail gecko, which come from like kind of sandstony sort of country. So I figured this could kind of just resemble like a little cave or something like that. But it just gives him so much more texture for him to run around on and and everything. So I think wifey's going to come in and actually give me a hand and paint a few of these up for me. This one's ready for a hit of colour. 
all the doors and stuff, they'll all be cleaned up towards the end after I've finished making mess everywhere. This one, this is actually a 30 by 30 by 60 tall. That's gonna go sit next to my disgusting <laughs> velvet geckos up there. So that'll go up there. I might actually save it for some like strops or something. Um, one of my Patreons, Elliot, he's given me a couple of eggs to look after from his ten quarter, so I'll see how they go. We'll see where we go from there. Little Sonic over here, we're gonna clean these out. I'm gonna get rid of the Yuki mulch and put some of that. I wanna just make it look really nice and deserty. A little bit more natural than the Yuki mulch. Same for Billy. His enclosure needs a good clean out. You can see there's heaps of urate and stuff in there, so I just wanna gut that out. Gonna do the same for the Kimbo, the Gillens. Um, not sure what I'm gonna do for these Gillens, just because they are kind of in breeding mode at the moment, so I don't really wanna disturb anything if possible. I don't want to confuse them too much, and the female's been nesting heaps, so I'm just going to kind of probably let them do their thing. But yeah, it's all, all guns all guns blazing here at the moment. I want to get a few of these enclosures looking pretty good for, for when my mate comes around. You guys will know who it is, most likely, but hopefully he turns up on Monday. At the very least, my enclosures will look all nice and clean and ready for summer. It's absolutely hot here at the moment it's just gone I think just about 10 o'clock in the morning and I'm sweating bullets so it's probably about time that I crack the crack the fan on and get a bit of air pumping through this garage I got both doors open plenty of air coming through but yeah it's a warm one I think Loki's got the right idea at the moment it's probably time for a swim it is that kind of day isn't it mate I need to defrost you some fish or something too you're looking hungry Time to feed some snakes as well. How lucky am I to have a wife that's actually helping me paint my <laughs> enclosures for me as well. <laughs> He's paying me great. Yeah. <laughs> I'll pay you with love. Yeah, that's good. But enough. I've got so much work to do that Danny's giving me a hand here to help paint these enclosures up for me, which is awesome. It's nice and easy work for her, especially while she's got the fan blowing on her. Yep. And I'll go and scoop some uh, lizard poo out of enclosures instead. <laughs> you sure you don't want to swap? Nah, I'm good. You Down there, wifey. Yep. Almost done, got wifey. one done. Yeah. It's looking pretty good. Done that. Got some rough scale pythons out. Sonic's little house is looking nice and dizzy again. Might need to add in some more sand later, but I gotta pick some up during the week. Looking pretty good. See you out in the yard having a bit of a play. That's all systems go. So this is the young Gillens monitor enclosure changed a little bit since the last video I did on it but to be honest I just want to change it up a little bit and make it a little bit more like actual desert looking you can see one of them hanging out there so I'm gonna to try to pull these guys out and get into this and clean it up real nice I'm still gonna be using that big log hollow as usual I got a few different branches to chuck into there to change it up so I've got two of the Gillens monitors out already but number three is doing exactly what a Gillen's monitor wants to do and he's hiding in this little log crevice here so I'm going to try to have to poke him out with a pair of tweezers because I want to be able to take this out to put the substrate in. So I've got those three little monkeys contained. They're not going anywhere now. I'll put them somewhere nice and safe. Add some extra locks because we all know Gillen's like to get out of stuff. And we'll clean up their enclosure. It's really hot. I need to go for a swim. But hey, there's a straight cricket climbing up there. The uh, Gillen's monitor enclosure, I've just given it a quick clean out. There's a few cockroach marks on the outside that I can't get to just because of the tight gaps. So inside's nice and clean and that's what really matters. I've chucked some of that pink granite in there as well, that crushed granite. 
it's a little bit wet now, so it will actually dry out and look a little bit, um, a little bit redder, I suppose, if you want to call it that, in a little bit. A little bit. But what I am going to do is chuck some of this reptile sand in there, just red reptile sand. Really make it look like the the mulga area around the NT. Let's see if that's enough. I like mixing these substrates together just because in particular you'll actually get a little bit of kind of texture through it as well rather than just being plain red sand. It's kind of nice to have a little bit of both in there and mix it up a little bit. Just makes it look a little bit more natural in, in my opinion. But it's been a little bit of while since I've had these guys on anything but just Yuki Mulch. You know, I've just gone Yuki Mulch Mental on everything and it starts just looking the same old, same old. So. It's nice to kind of mix it up for a bit. Not the biggest fan of sand and sliding door tracks, but these are lockable and swinging doors, so I'll be fine with these guys. All right, I'm gonna go grab some more logs because I got some branches and stuff outside. I want to kind of make it look like this is a dead mulga tree and there's like a little bit of bush and stuff around it, like from other dead mulgas and that. Maybe chuck a little bit of leaf litter on the bottom, but keep it pretty minimal. And then we'll get these little guys back into their enclosure. I reckon this is going to look pretty sweet. I had these twigs and bits and pieces drying outside for a little bit now. So I'm going to see how I can hopefully get them into this, this box. We've got all gnarly bark and stuff all over them, which is really cool. Just need to figure out what bits I'm going to use, what bits I'm going to snap. Try to keep most of it. Try being the key word there. Cool to get a few of these bits and pieces in there. So we'll see how it goes. That's not looking too shabby. It gives them a bit of different textures and stuff to climb around on. They can get in up underneath here, underneath the UVB light, which will be good too. Get a little bit closer to it. I can add a little bit of these sticks and stuff down the bottom as well for a bit more texture around the back. There'll always be heaps of this dead wood just hanging around where these dead mulga trees in the wild are, from where they've all broken down over time. I do have a little grass tuft as well that I will chuck in there. I will be also using some of Fish Organics dried gum leaves as well. I'm not going to go mental on this. I just want to add a little bit of leaf, leaf litter in there just for a bit of texture. Like honestly, that's all I'm going to do. I just want to keep it really minimalistic. Last but not least, I'm just going to put a water bowl in down the front there. That's all I wanted too. I just wanted it to be really simple, but really effective. I reckon that's looking pretty cool. I'll give you a bit of a better shot now. There you go, there's a bit of a better look at it. I love that branch. They get right into the cracks behind it as well and get wedged right into it as you saw earlier. Now I've missed having this red sandy look all around in a few of the enclosures too. So these little gillens are gonna look fantastic in here. I'll go and get them out now and get them into this enclosure. Well, I've got two of them in the enclosure now, and I've got number three just here. Clumsy little lizards. There we go. How good does he look in there? So simple, but it can be so effective. Just an awesome look with some dead, dead dried out plants. The logs, rather. A little bit of dry grass with a zip tie around it. And some awesome red desert sand with some pink crushed granite. Try make y'all comfortable. Right. For the record, you ain't try to grow then it's not for you. Right. For the record, 
Lab on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to wait. For the record. It's warm. I need to turn these lights off in here to keep some of these little guys cool. Check this little dude out. This is nicknamed Mr. Wiggles. My uh, Kimberly Rock Monitor. A beautiful little dude. I've just finished out cleaning out his house. I've done the same as the other guys. Pink crushed granite, a bit of red reptile sand. I can't wait because Cam's uh, made a new background for this guy here. I'm really excited to get that in and, and you know really deck out his enclosure because he's uh, he's definitely one of the most beautiful little lizards I've ever owned. He's one of those animals that you know is a bit of a dream animal to get and you know if I end up finding him a partner one day that'd be great. But I'm not worried if I don't. I'm just I'm very lucky to be able to keep an animal as beautiful as this. So anyway, I'm going to let him go in here. We'll see if we can follow him around a little bit. He's gone right up the top. He's probably just going to duck straight away too, which is a bit unfortunate, but yeah, you can see I've got these fake rocks everywhere. They're awesome because I can just take them out, blast them with a hose, and they're nice and clean. Got that nice pink crushed granite and sand mixture, which comes up a treat, looks so good. A mixture of leaf litter there too. I've used some of Corey's gum leaves as well as some of my own leaves that I've collected from around the place. A couple of these big banks here, brushes. No, it's looking good. So I'm not going to be redoing the Gillens monitor enclosure because this girl's been nesting. Hopefully, I felt it yesterday. I feel like she's got a couple of eggs inside of her. She's been getting in there every now and then, digging around. She's got a couple of little holes and stuff in there. So I really want to leave her alone, not disturb this enclosure as much as I can. I'm just putting food and water in and leaving it, leaving it be. So I will eventually give it a good clean out, but maybe after the breeding season's done because I really want to be able to secure myself a couple of Gillen's monitor hatches. I might be a bit greedy as well and keep a couple back myself this year. And don't you eat any eggs. He doesn't usually, but you never know with these guys sometimes. Hey, mate. Yeah, you gorgeous little thing. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. That's right. For the record, you ain't trying to grow any stuff for you. That's right. For the record, lab on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to waste. For the record, for the record. Time to feed the loke stuff. Here's a bit of fish, mate. Whee! Get that into you. I'm gonna give him a few scallops and bits and pieces as well. Not too crash up. I'll have to fish that one out later or he can go get it later. There's a bit of scallop and a bit of fish. Giving him a bit of a varied diet is always a good thing. You know, in the wild, he'd be foraging around for little mussels and bits and pieces in the mangrove. So I try to do my best and give it to him in captivity as well. Unfortunately, it's not too good when it comes out the other end. But that's why I do these big water changes. So I'm just feeding the turtles a bit of bassafilla, same as what Loki just got. Let's see if we can get a little bit of footage of these guys coming up and, and grabbing a bit of the good stuff. We've already had a slight nibble on it. Here comes a longy. Come oh, on, mate. Hey! Get a little chunk. With these four turtles in here, they'll they'll pick it at all and destroy it all. It's good to give them a feed on something different as well, rather than just pellets and 
worms and bits and pieces. They'll break it up with their claws and turn it into little pieces. The little fish will grab some bits as well. They'll, they'll just absolutely make mincemeat of it. So I threw this together for a little kamikaze, the brown tree snake. She's hiding down in that really humid hide that I just made down there, full of sphagnum, sphagnum moss that's all nice and wet. It's a little bit of a quick enclosure just to chuck together, but I wanted to get her out of that tub for a long time, so this has just given me a, a chance for somewhere for her to go. Got a couple of little ficuses in there and a pile of palm. I just got a little simple LED downlight on top, as well as I've got a um, one of the URS infrared spiral globes inside of there on an on-off thermostat. Yeah, we'll see how she goes in here. I just needed to get her out of the tub, and this just gives her a bit more room to move. It'll do for now. It'll be nice to be able to come in here and actually see her without being in a plastic box. So we've got rats aplenty. I'm going to go around, maybe even try and do it one-handed. Feed some of these snakes. Give the little little green wasabi you go first so we'll try to find a nice little small small fuzzy rat for him there's not much in a lot of these they're all pretty much the same size next up is Midori Trying to find one that's maybe a smidge bigger for her. I'll give her something to chew on. So next up, we've got the, the Ruffies. This little guy's wedged right in the crack over here. Don't know where the other one is. It's probably hiding down somewhere here. It's pretty hard doing this one-handed. Oh, I can see him. Here he comes. Come on. Given the enclosure a bit of a hose down at the moment too. Yay! There we go. I'll keep an eye on these guys while these guys have their their little snacks hanging out here. So I didn't film me feeding the snakes in the rack just because they're they're in a rack and you can't really see what I'm doing when I'm doing it anyway. But I will try to film my jungle car taking a big juicy rat right now. There we are. I quickly feed the diamonds and it's a snake's bed. It's honestly so warm guys. You guys don't need to see me feed diamond pythons. You've seen me do it before. The two little guys have just chucked them in their tubs. They don't actually want to eat today. One of them's in shed, the other one does want to eat. I'm not going to force anything, but the big girl arrow down the bottom there, she's uh, she's pretty hungry, so she's going to have a couple of rats and uh, old mate Car, the jungle python, she's going to score another one as well. So that'll do those big girls for a few weeks now. It's good to get them fed. Well, we've got another few enclosures closer closer to being finished. Still a bit to go, bit of colour, bit of shading. I need to black out the sides on them as well to hide all this. 
But that's enough for one day. Got a few things going on. A few animals have been fed. A few animals have got some new substrates. New logs, bits and pieces everywhere. I like the little Gillen's enclosure. They've been already digging around, making a mess, as Gillen's do. Hey, mister. But Danny and I have had enough for one day. <laughs> it's been a big day. It's really hot. I am gonna go herping tonight, so if I do happen to find anything while I'm out herping, I might throw some clips in at the end of this video. Hopefully we find something. If we don't, I'll see you guys all in the next video. And uh, yeah, stay tuned, because Coop's Reptiles is gonna come and say day very, very shortly and film a video here again for his third visit. Thanks again, guys, for joining in this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe on the video. Just a bit of a hodgepodge of a video today, but I will catch you guys all on the next one. Take it easy. All right, so it's still warm out. I just checked the driveway temperature out the front of our place and it was still 31 degrees. And it's now about 7 p.m. or thereabouts. I'm just in a car park waiting for Jaden. Jaden Walsh, who is a walking encyclopedia of Australian herptofauna knowledge. And uh, from here, we'll be going up into Karingua National Park and hopefully finding some death adders, bandy bandies, maybe some small light snakes, tiger snakes if we're really lucky and a whole other menagerie of critters. So let's see what we find. It's a nice night, hey? A few termites in the air already. I don't think we're due for rain though. Nice little piggy. <laughs> well, we've only found, found one thick tail gecko. Oh, look at this little red crayfish. That's pretty cool. Uh, one thing to thick tail gecko. And here are the frogs. No snakes yet. The road's still 30 odd degrees. Might disappear quickly. Ah. It's hard to wash the musk off your hands. <laughs> Cute. But that's good. If there's blind snakes, we might see bandy bandies. The best position, I guess. It's 10 o'clock and the road temp's still about 30 degrees. Just left the guys photographing a giant burrowing frog. I'm still determined to get an adder tonight. There's another one of those red crayfish. And another one. It's actually quite common up here. 
cool animals. Decent size too. Oh, just smashed a mozzie right into my lip. 